I'm here with country recording artist Eric Etheridge. Congratulations on your debut single, Liquor's Calling the Shots. Thank you so much, Katie, for having me. It's very exciting. I'm, it's, it is, yes. <laughs> I'm oh, speechless. It's, well, thank you, yeah. Uh, how does the song describe who you are as an artist? Um, well, it, it works on a couple levels that way. Um, first of all, the song and the idea, I didn't come up with the idea, it was my producer who did, so I, okay. I co-wrote it with him. Um, but I love the song title idea. I, thought, I was like, this is, how is this not a song yeah. already, right? That was sort of, you know, uh, my thoughts on it. And I think the idea of Liquor's Calling the Shots is something that a lot of people can relate to. You know, the idea of having some heartbreak or some hardship yeah. and, and maybe not dealing with it in the best way all the time. I think we can, you know, it's something very real that everybody experiences. Um, but I think those things are necessary to go through in life to, you know, they make you a stronger person when you come on the other side of it. Uh, that on, on the other end, I think it describes me sort of as an artist and it, it represents me as an artist is more the, the way that it sounds. So when I started working with Brian Howes in LA, I was like, you know, when, when, whatever I want my sound to be, I want it to be huge. I want it to sound massive. You right. know? And, yeah. and, uh, I want it to be like the first song that I, I draw. I want it to be sort of a statement, you know, like this is, you know, this is what this is what we're doing. Yeah. And uh, so the way that it sounds and and what we call the sonic brand, I guess, is is very uh, reminiscent of like I guess what I wanted to do musically. Uh, also, it sort of brings in a lot of elements that I grew up with. Like there's a lot of '80s rock elements in there. There's there's uh, a lot of pop elements in there too. Um, and uh, there's like elements of Brian Adams in there and yeah. even Shania Twain, Mutt Lang stuff. So, um, so I think it's a really good song that represents me as an artist and my influences. All the miles and memories, chasing hope and chasing dreams. I see you there in the sweet summer air. Never thought we'd ever fall. We had it good, we had it all. But some things don't last, so I drink to the past. Did you include any personal experiences in the song? Because I know, like, we yeah. all deal with heartbreak, yeah. right? So did you kind of draw in a little bit of that? Or? I think, like, I mean, yeah, like I've been, I've been heartbroken in the past for sure, but also uh, because we wrote, we co-wrote it with it was me and three other right. three other writers. Right. I think all of us are just like, and, and every time you write a song, I think even as songwriters, we you draw on those experiences pretty much every time you're writing a song, yeah. right? And with us four, it was like, we were sort of all drawing on the same idea, I guess you could say, but yeah. This one, no particular, like, specific subject matter. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. <laughs> well, I didn't know if that was gonna be awkward asking yeah, you, no, so no, I'm no, glad no, it's, it's like, good. not a particular yeah. Yeah, 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 incident. Sure. Definitely. Yeah, for sure, for <laughs> sure. Uh, what do you hope your fans take away from this song? Um, well, I wanted this to be like an, uh, a summer anthem, you know, and, yeah. and I just hope that, like, I could just picture it being at like a festival or something, people just shouting, shouting back at me, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, and this is, this is something that I want, uh, hopefully this is an anthem for somebody else, you know, down the line. Maybe they're going through a rough time and then this ends up being their song to maybe help get them through that rough time. That would be awesome uh, as an artist, you know, to, to hear that, so. How does music help you on a daily basis? Music is, uh, it's very therapeutic, I find. Yeah. Like being an artist is, it can be stressful, uh, especially with my other job too. It can be, it can be very hectic. Um, Your other job as a uh, chiropractor. Yes, my other, uh, <laughs> yes, I am a chiropractor by day. So that's, uh, it's never boring. Um, uh, yeah, so music for me is uh, definitely therapeutic, but it's like something that calms me down too. You yeah. know, it keeps, like, keeps me focused and centered. Uh, so that's what I use it for personally. Now when you're creating a song, are you thinking and picturing of where you'd like this song being played? Yes, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, when I'm like thinking when we're in the studio, we're producing or I'm coming up with a concept of something, I picture, you know, I would love to play stadium someday. I would love to do that and, and this is a song that I mean, and the other ones that we did too, which we're going to be releasing uh, in the near future. Uh, I want, you know, I could see these being played in a stadium or a huge festival stage. Yeah. So that's sort of the end goal.
Well, and speaking of festivals, you were at Boots and Hearts the very same year I was at Boots and oh, Hearts. Oh, you were there too. I was. Did you happen to see us on stage? By I, did. No I did. I did. I oh did. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. that's awesome. Okay. Um, but I think all around, uh, your experience was way different than my experience. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, you had more of the celebrity experience. Right. I had more of the awful camping, get right. your tent egged oh my experience. God. Oh, that ha oh my god. Yeah. Oh, that sounds awful. <laughs> but we still uh, had a good time. I'm sure you did. Yes. <laughs> I remember driving into Boots and Hearts and just seeing like rows of tents in between all the garbage. Yep. There's just garbage and tents yep. and garbage. That was me. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is crazy. And like, when they say it's camping, it's like gra camping on a gravel yeah, road. Yeah, so dusty, Very so dusty. dry. Yeah, I was like, oh God. Yeah. Some tents were just ripped open. I was like, this is... You know, that was probably ripped open on day one. It was still three <laughs> days to go. I don't know what yeah. those people were doing. So, we're devoted fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was awesome. What was the highlight for you? Of Boots and Hearts? Yeah. Oh, man. Um, when we found out that we were going to play on the main stage in front of 35,000 people, uh, <laughs> I was, I've never played on a, a stage that big or with a crowd that size. And right. that was definitely the highlight of stepping out on that stage. Um, I remember the whole day before I was just I was a nervous wreck. Like, oh, I, was I bet. Like, I'm like, how yeah. can I? Uh, it's intimidating. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and to hear your your voice come through the massive speakers for the first time, you're like, whoa. You know, I can say anything right now <laughs> and get away with it. You know, <laughs> and there's but a lot you, of uh, you didn't. I did it. I <laughs> you played it myself, cool. <laughs> right. I sang my song, but I'm like, you know, but I could. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you're when you're performing though on stage in front of such a massive crowd, mm -hmm. what literally goes through your head at that moment? Do you want to know what went through my head? Yeah. At the moment? Okay. Uh, well, I was like, here's how I justified it. Actually, I was less nervous when so Thomas Rhett was playing. Okay. And uh, I was like, wow, this is pretty crazy. Thomas Rhett's playing right there. Yeah. Uh, we're we're up on this balcony watching him, and then Emerson Drive went on. And when I looked out at the crowd, I was like, oh, I'm like. This isn't as bad as I thought. <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, you just, because you just see a sea of people. You don't right. see individual people. Right. And I was still terrified, though. When I remember walking out, I see, like, I walk out, and first thing I saw was, like, a family member right in the front. <gasps> just, like, first person I saw, I was like, oh, my gosh. And then I'm like, I know all these people somehow <laughs> in the front. Uh, and then I was like, and then I told myself when I got up there, I was like, you know, realistically, all those people in the back, they don't even, they don't even know. <laughs> they don't even care who I am. All these people around here, I'm like, this is manageable. You know, I, yeah. I look, I'm like, this, this I can do with this 6,000 people. So kind of blocked out right. the rest yeah, of us. You know, yeah. yeah. So, and I think it was Sunday. Everybody was, you know, I don't know how much they remembered of the Sunday. So that's what I told myself to get me through it. Right. Um, yeah, and it, it worked for the time. What's the greatest advice you were ever told? Oh, greatest advice I've, I've ever been told. Uh, I've, you know, I, I study, um, I study entrepreneurs. Is what mm -hmm. I do. That's that's like if, I guess what I read in my off time is okay. is looking at successful people. Like how how do they tick? Um, and I, I kind of have like a, uh, I, could, I kind of have a list of things I could say. But you know, when it comes to this situation in terms of music. Um, be, I guess my favorite quote that I repeat in my head all the time is be so good that they can't say no. Right? So if it's, like what, you know, so, yeah. it, uh, and what that means is like, you know, or, or like, um, you know, if you don't want to blend in with the crowd, then be so good that you, you stand out essentially. Um, and if someone, you know, doesn't like what you're doing or maybe they don't like your songs or maybe they don't like your performance, then you have to get better to a point yeah. where they have no choice but to like you. And there's so many, so many uh, examples of that in the music industry right now. I mean, uh, I'm a big fan of Sam Hunt, uh, the country artist Sam Hunt. Yep. And, and uh, from what I've told, like when I was down in Nashville, like a lot of people passed on him, apparently, from what I'm told anyways, uh, at the start, because he was so different, mm -hmm. right? But he's so, his songs were so good, his performance is so good. Yes. Uh, in my opinion, anyways. And in, in mine too. In my opinion, okay, and I've seen him live a few times. <clears throat> uh, that they, it was just undeniable. They just couldn't do it. Like, like it was getting streamed and so much on social media. Country Radio had to play it because people were requesting it. 
uh, in my mind, it's like that's somebody. It's like yeah, it was so good. They they couldn't say they no. They couldn't say no. Yeah. You know? um, so that's what I. That's my daily kind of motivation. I guess you could say. But. Well, thank you so much, Eric. No problem. I really, I really enjoyed this. Thank um, you so much for having me. And in honor of your single, I thought it might be fun to play a little game oh, called right. Name That Liquor Brand. Oh, damn. So I okay. will show you the logo okay. and you tell me the brand. Oh, man. I don't, I, I, okay, I'll try. Okay. All right. <laughs>